Hi everyone, so this one's going to be for travelling salesmen. It's a bit sneaky really because you do lots of little bits and then it kind of builds up a travelling salesman. So remember, the idea with travelling salesmen is you're finding kind of this, 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 time, um, this time interval from the upper and the lower bound. That's what you're looking at. Um, so let's have a look. So it says, use print starting at A to find the minimum spanning tree. Now if you notice, this one hasn't, it's not got a J. J's down here. So this will be when we do the two shortest from a start point plus a minimum spanning tree. These we're going to use together. Um, I think that's part D of the question um, where we're finding a lower bound for it. So let's do prims down here. So remember with prims, we delete the row. Number the column and circle the smallest from any given, any numbered column. Right, so I'll start it off, but then I'll, I'll kind of pause it and then so I'm not wasting time. So I'm starting at A. So I'm going to delete A, being careful to cross the numbers through. I'm going to number A and I'm going to circle the smallest in A, which is 22. Now what I'm also going to do, I'm going to, so I'm going to list within the question the edges in the order that I've chosen them. When you're marking, as a marker, you also you can check the numbers along the top. If the numbers match on the top, then you know you've chosen them in the correct order. So if you didn't list them down the side, in theory you still get it. But I always have a major twitch about that and feel that you should always list the edges as well. So now I'm repeating it, so delete number and look for the smallest in A or H. So the smallest in A or H, uh, is, I think it's the 24. Yeah, it's the 24 there. So B to A is 24. So then delete it, number it, look for the smallest in A, B or H which I think is, where is it, I think it's the 27, uh, 27 D to H. And I'm going to keep on repeating that to the end, so I've gone through it three times here, I'll keep on going to the end, I'll just pause it and you can see me get saved. There. So if you look, I've done prims. So as a marker, I kind of memorize where the circles are. And I'd remember one, three, five, four, six, eight, seven, two. And that would get me full marks unless it explicitly told me to list the edges, in which case you still fill in there. So that's my minimum spanning tree done. So part A said to do prims, done that. Clearly state the order in which you've selected the edges. Yep, done that. I'll state the way to it. So if I add these up, it comes to 183. So part B, my minimum spanning tree, is 183. Okay? Right, so then it says, table 2 shows the distances in miles from J, so all the different towns. Uh, we need to visit all the towns, starting and finishing at J, using nearest neighbour. So right, let's have a look. So where's the closest for J to start with? So the closest for J to start with will be the 25, won't it, J to F. So I'm going to do, so for part C, I'm going to do J to F for 25. We'll do a bit of shuffling up and down now. So I'm going to start at F, all the way back up here. So the shortest one from F, so if I take that as a from, Two, so F to E is my shortest one. So what I do is I just tick at the side. So F to E is my shortest one from F. So F to E is thirty-four. So E thirty-four, and then I look at F. Uh, sorry, look at E, and I say right then. So through E, my shortest one, not including F, is going to be. C. So I'm going to go to C now. 
So C for 26, I think. C for 26. Different people do this different ways. Then I'm going to go from C, look from C, but I don't go anywhere near E or F. So that's going to be to D, which is 21. D for 21. And if I keep on doing it, then I've got H for 27. I can't actually read my own writing. A for 24. B for 24. So A to B, 24. Then go on to G for 39. I've visited everywhere, so I just need to get back from G back to J, which is 49. G back to J, 49. So that gives me 267. So my upper bound, using nearest neighbour, is 267. So that's part B done. So I found the upper bound. But the, idea, the, thing, the thing with this is, that's 49 coming back. There has to be a better way where it's less coming back. So that's why this is the upper bound bit. So part D says, start by deleting J, and then find the lower bound. So the lower bound is my two shortest from J. Plus my minimum spanning tree without J. So my two shortest from J are J to F and J to B. So I've got J to F, which is 25. I've got J to B, which is 27. And then I'm going to add on the minimum spanning tree without J, which is actually my part A answer. So my minimum spanning tree is 183. So then that tells me my lower bound is, if I add them together, it's 235, isn't it? It's 235. Oops. So this is the one, if I kind of talk, I, I explain this as like, um, how am I to it about? I explain it as like a, a, an ice cream cone. So going from J, out to F and B is the cone, and then what you're hoping is that your minimum spanning tree that you've got from here, if you drew that minimum spanning tree, just kind of naturally drops on from and like the minimum spanning tree literally might look like that, but it kind of drops back down. That's your ideal, but that doesn't always work. That that minimum spanning tree would naturally start and end up between F and B. So this is why this can be an like improved part as well. Now what they don't ask you in here then is for an inequality. So this, if you wanted like an inequality to go with it, 235 is your lower bound. And your upper bound you've got is 267. So that would be something extra. As other little things to think about, if you had a choice of lower bounds, so if I've got a choice of lower bounds, I always choose the biggest. If I've got a choice of upper bounds, I always choose the smallest. The reason being is that I want to close down the gap as much as I can do. So I hope that's kind of made sense. So we've done uh, an upper bound with um, nearest neighbour, a lower bound with two shortest plus a minimum spanning tree. There is another way of working out the upper bound, which is to do the minimum spanning tree of all of it, and then double it, and then maybe improve it, but that's just ridiculous. It kills me, I hate doing that. Right, so we're well done with that one, don't I?